This content is brought to you in association with my buddies over at Jam Jam Cards UK. You can find the links to the eBay store and the Facebook page in the description. Hi guys, it's Joe here from Rufio. Welcome to the channel. If this is your first time here, welcome aboard. You should definitely hit subscribe and the notification bell before you go any further and you realise how fucking garbage this content is. But if this is not your first time on the channel, Welcome back, you absolute fucking loser. Seriously though, do you know I've only some bad to do with your time? It's definitely way better content out there to go and watch. But either way, I suppose I should say thank you very much for coming along. I do genuinely appreciate it. So for today's content, we're going to be huffing a whole lot of copium because we're talking about Invoked Dogmatica. This is a deck that I've been playing for the now previous format and in fact had a slated video to go up today for the previous Bill, well then the list dropped and actually took something away from the deck as if the deck needed less things to fucking play with. So here we are today looking at some revised changes, a provisional list for the new format that you can work with. We can talk about what has been good, what has been bad over the last format and how that impacts our decisions going forward because in reality, in terms of the decks we're going to be playing against, not all that much changes and unfortunately the one deck that was very good based which we'll probably see a lot less of, was actually probably the one where we were getting most of our scalps in terms of the better matchups. We do still have a pretty poor bird matchup, to say the least. And uh, yeah, we pretty much just lose to Albaz straight up. So it is what it is. Now, before we do get stuck into today's content, if you are looking to pick up some new singles off the back of those ban list changes, then check out the channel sponsors, Jam Jam Cards UK. There'll be a link down in the description. If you go ahead and use that along with the code RUFIO15, you'll get a nice 15% discount on your eBay order. Apologies if I sound a little bit flatter than usual. I did manage to go ahead and get the big old lurgy I can't say without getting demonetized. So throat's a little bit scratchy and uh, our mood's a little bit up and down. But for the most part, we're actually okay. So fingers crossed that won't come across too much in the video. And also, if you're wondering why I'm standing with this setup, as part of having said lurgy, my temperature is a little bit up and down and I actually don't have any pants on. So I didn't really want to put you in a position where you got to see the boxes. We know we keep that content for the Patreons. But anyway, I digress. I've definitely waffled on too much. Let's get stuck in to this absolutely atrocious deck profile. So here we are, Duelists. This is the absolutely terrible deck profile you've all been waiting for. Like I say, not all too much changes. Of course, we had that big hit in terms of Anaconda getting absolutely waxed off the list. And then we've made one or two small changes to kind of shift with the way we believed the meta is going to go. Obviously, it's only day two of these meta changes, so it may well be that some of this is irrelevant. And in fact, things move completely differently to planned. On a quick note of the other variants of you here, wondering what Invoke Dogmatica offers you that the other variants do, uh, don't offer you, well... The answer is very little, actually. This deck doesn't offer you much that the other variants of Invoked don't offer you already. In fact, most Invoked variants, I would say, quite categorically, are not great to play at the moment. In terms of mid rangey decks, it certainly falls behind Sword Soul, which I suspect we may see a resurgence in. And if you're looking at the other variants and hoping that they may give you a lease of life, really the only viable one is to go with the Branded option. And quite frankly, if you're going to play Branded, you should just play the better version, which doesn't invo involve the Invoked engine at all. So that's just my personal opinion on there. It is what it is. It's just one of those things where, unfortunately, this has become a deck where you're going to have those formats where it's insane, and you're going to have some where it's not so insane. And when you play into a format that's full of super polys, which is an easy way to out most of your good cards in this... Uh, Bird being a naturally great matchup against this. It's just, yeah, it just makes for a bit of a disaster. But if you're feeling strong and you want to continue on, then this may help you out. So let's get stuck in instead of carrying on whinging about the deck. So we start off with the Invoked Package, of course. Triple Alistair, you absolutely have to play it. Um, yeah, it's just it's the boy, right? He's the one who gets everything going. Um, triple copies of the Field Spell, Magical Meltdown. Uh, yeah, you have to play three of this. You just, again, you need to see Alistair. The games where you don't see it is incredibly sad, so yeah. This just helps you get there, of course. And double copies of Invocation. The third one does occasionally come up, but honestly, you don't really want to open this unless you've already got one of the other pieces and you're just trying to bait hand traps. Otherwise, the rest of the time, this is kind of dead. Um, yeah, it is what it is. Um, yeah, just two's absolutely fine. It just keeps everything recurring absolutely okay. 
onto the Dogmatica package. This is actually a little bit larger than usual. Made some changes from my last system. We'll get into that at the moment. Uh, triple copies of Ecclesia, the most important monster in this set at the moment. Uh, yeah, it just gets everything going. It is just your main engine starter. Really, really good. Um, yeah, three copies is absolutely what you need to play. Uh, a single copy of Maximus and a single copy of Fleur de Lee. Uh, one Fleur de Lee is more than enough. This is not the Dogmatica deck, um, despite the fact that we probably play as many Dogmatica cards as we do in Voltons in the main deck, but that's besides the point. Um, yeah, this one's decent. It's okay most of the time. The fact that the uh, negation effectively happens from hand can be tricky for people to actually stop, which is really, really cool. And of course, it makes everything bigger, which can be a huge bonus a lot of the time when you push off a game. But one is more than enough. You really don't want to see it in your opening hand. You just want to search it. Much the same with Maximus. Maximus previously, before the Albaz release, was a card that you wanted to see. And we actually played two copies of it. However, into most of the big decks at the moment, it is fucking terrible to say the least. You want it there for those rogue matchups or where you just need an extra body for a bit of protection. And it is another way to get into your Shadol package, which a lot of the time is actually going to end up being your win condition, especially in the current game. Now, having said that, of course, Winder is particularly easy to out at the moment with Super Poly being everywhere. So do expect that it won't carry you as far as normal. But if you are, again, someone who wants to play this, or maybe you play at Locals where there's not a lot of, uh, you know, super meta-relevant decks, then this is actually probably a great deck for you to play. You'll just womp everyone. And that's the reality, is you beat basically everyone that isn't a top meta deck, but you pretty much auto-lose those. So, yeah, if you're thinking of taking this to regionals and stuff, unless you're lucky or you just... Colossal fucking cranium, then probably don't bother. Anyway, Nadir Servant, uh, two copies of this. Uh, yeah, it's, if it was a three, of course, we would play three. Uh, being able to dump the stuff into Grave, um, a little bit like Maximus, but of course, it's only you that gets to do it, which can have its benefits if you're playing these decks that do have stuff that's going to trip you up if you try and do that. Of course, this can help you there. And finally, a single copy of Punishment. This is something we cut before. I've actually decided to put it back in. Um, yeah, Punishment's Punishment. Uh, it is what it is. There's games where it's not so great and there's games where it's insane. But I found a lot of the time, especially without the extra Maximus, that a lot of the time, if you opened enough of the package where you opened, say, an Ecclesia and an Adir, you were running out of stuff to really add back off like Titanoclad and get all those things going. So in those kind of games, it gives you another option. There's also games where you just don't see your invoked package. And this is another way of keeping you in the game. The downside, of course, is that lockout, but we all already know how that works. But yeah, I think this package as it is is absolutely fine. Punishment kind of subject to opinion but i think this works absolutely okay if you're going to play the package at all dpe package is still very much here i think the advantage it offers you is just too fucking insane not to play it uh, double fusion destiny one celestial one dasher um i was actually quite surprised we didn't see this hit because it is basically the most insane part of this um the whole package altogether is just still pretty busted of course even with anaconda which to be honest with you we didn't make it an awful lot before it was just kind of our plan c because really if you inv open the invoke stuff with the dogmatica stuff that gives you way too much advantage than choosing to go for dpe over the dogmatica package instead uh, i made that mistake many times yeah don't do that if it comes up and you've got the choice always go with the dogmatica stuff you just get way more out of it um however dp is absolutely insane and the package overall is absolutely insane i think it just needs to stay anyway um again optional if you choose not to play it that's up to you but i really think it needs to stay Hand traps, and there are lots of them. Uh, Ash Blossom and Joy of Spring at three. Uh, the most generic hand trap hits every deck in some way. It just ends rogue decks completely. So yeah, you just need to play it. Uh, Ghost Ogre and Snow Rabbit still at three. Potentially might come down in favor of other hand traps now that based is less prevalent. So I don't know. The Brave stuff is still going to be everywhere though, but I feel like this hits decks a little bit less than it did before. Not an awful lot, but still very, very strong hand trap and absolutely fine in here. Again, subject to personal opinion as it is with all of this, of course. Um, double copies of DD Crow. This is because people are playing Branded Lost and things like that. There are other decks as well that it hits, um, but it, yeah, it just gives you another option where Ghost Bell doesn't necessarily give you the same substance of course it is also a dark so it can help set up intricate little plays like making winder as well which does come up more often than you'd think uh, and then finally of course to ghost bell this was at three but we cut one along with some other bits to make space for the additional hand traps and such uh you could cut this all together and maybe play an extra crow and then one other card that you like i'm not really sure what you'd play but just gives you some ideas and then our final of all of these of course no ghost girl is infinite impermanence um we still lose hard pretty hard to bird and this is just probably one of the better ones playing into them um apart from like gamma and droll but yeah the, it's the it's the best one that you would main deck for the most part like in this kind of format uh and also the fact that if you go first of course it is it's not terrible anyway 
And then onto some power cards. We've got triple copies of Forbidden Droplet. Um, being able to dodge stuff when you're trying to make your Alistair place can come up an awful lot, a lot more than you would think. Um, if you are forced to go second, it gives you a line of play because this deck isn't insane at doing that unless you open the right hands. Um, yeah, it just gives you options. Again, a lot of decks are moving this to the side now. I think for this deck, it still remains in the main. And the rest are power one-offs here. So we've got Terraforming. We are playing Field Spell, so you need to see it. It's an extra copy of anything. Mystic Mine, game one against Branded, it's usually a free win because they don't usually have back row removal. And the only thing they do have is if they play the Brave package, they have the Drake back. Um, but of course, you can plan for that anyway. Uh, a single copy of Caught by the Grave. I'm surprised this is actually still available, but hand traps are everywhere, so we're going to play it. And then our final card is Shadol Schism because a lot of the time, this is actually a win condition. You can't really win without it. That does wrap up the main deck. We were playing Souls and uh, Illusion of Chaos before. I've decided to cut that now because a lot of the added benefits of that, not only were, of course, being able to draw deeper and things like that, um, but the fact that we now don't have Anaconda means that we don't have really anything relevant to link into. We were playing Dark as well. You'll see later on the changes that I've made in regards to that. So really, the Souls and everything doesn't really offer you the same benefit it did before. So we have opted to cut that, which is really sad because I really like that package. Um, but yeah, that rounds off our main deck. I'm pretty sure it's a solid 40, if I'm not mistaken, if my math isn't terrible. Um, hopefully, I'm correct on that front. And onto the extra deck. So, a few changes in here. Uh, it's relatively cookie cutter, I believe. I don't think there's anything insane going on here anymore. Uh, we've got a secure gardener for the combo, and we've got an Al Mirage for the combo. Uh, being able to get into Purgatrio is, of course, great. And that does go back, actually, to the Mystic Mine inclusion there, if you were wondering about Mystic Mine, and why you should definitely be playing it if you're playing this deck. I know a lot of people don't like it, but... There are some decks where slapping down a mine, they don't really have an out, and if you can get to Purgatrio, you game them on the spot. And that happens a lot, a lot more than you'd think. It used to happen to Based all the time, of course, Based. Hopefully not a deck anymore, but you get the point. Uh, but yeah, you just need it in there. Uh, DPE, because, yeah, we're playing the package. The card still just offers an absolute ton of advantage, so you need to play it. Uh, one Super Poly target. This could possibly be up to two. There are a couple of flex spots in here, which I will get to towards the end. We'll talk about those there at that point but just a one for now this is the most powerful of them i believe there are other options though and there are some really good options in fact out there but just a one is more than fine in terms of extra deck space titanic cloud of course for yeah shenanigans entis for much the same sort of reason uh on to some shadows just the three here we've got a single construct which i know some lists omit i really like construct in here there are weird matchups where this can come up and just really deal with stuff of course being able to send the light from grave uh, being able to send life, sorry, uh, light from the field to the grave with schism, sorry, COVID brain kicking in, um, can really come up quite a lot more than you would think. And of course, a lot of people don't expect this, and you summon it, and it can actually deal with a lot of boards. Uh, Winder, because Winder, this card is, well, the reason you play the package. And App Cologne, uh, you virtually never, ever going to summon this. But I guess technically it's an option, but it, it's just never going to happen. Um, this is there, of course, to get you into that schism. And then the rest of our extra deck is, in fact, invoked targets that's right of course we cut dark and we cut verte dark and verte are just never going to come up well verte is not going to come up because it's banned but dark's never going to come up because yeah you just don't have the extra bodies or the resources you're better off just keeping them on the field we're not trying to out people's dpes as much although we still have plenty of ways of doing that so therefore it's not as big of an issue uh, so we start with one single purgatrio absolutely have to play this card if you're not playing this you're a fucking monster uh two copies of mechaba um, the second one comes up occasionally, not as much, but there are games where when you need it, it's going to win you the game. So uh, late game, it can be insane to get one of these out as well, especially when you're trading resources and you're trying to uh, keep that advantage and pressure up on your opponent. This can be absolutely insane. Orgoades, this is one that has been in since the get-go. This is actually like my favorite of the Invoked Monsters, so absolutely has to stay in there. This card does absolutely bits for you. It's great. And then onto our two new inclusions, and these are kind of... I mean, in some ways you might expect them, in other ways you might not. So we've got a single copy of Raijin. This is something we played in my early builds, but it got took out pretty quick because I wasn't playing a lot of bird matchups. Um, and it doesn't necessarily deal with the threat as much, but it does give you an option, which is something that you don't currently have without this. So, And we have the extra next space now. So this is one of the flex spots I was talking about. This could be a better super poly target. You could play an extra mecha bird if you really want that. Another Purga Trio. Do whatever the hell you like with it. It's just another option to try out. And then maybe there's a good Link 2 option that you want to go for. Maybe you want to go for some win buttons like Axis Code, which you're never going to really summon. But it's an option. That kind of thing. This just worked really well for me. Um, at least on paper. And then the final of our options here is 
Kaliga. I feel like this is one of these cards that could trip a few people up. Uh, it's certainly not insane, and this is probably the most flexible of these spots. In fact, it's probably the first one to go if anything does go. But I've tested this in the past, and there's games where it's great, and there's games where it's not so great. But it does, again, give you options for your invocation if you want to banish particularly difficult stuff uh, from your opponent's grave the likes of dpe for example can now be hit a little bit easier with things like this although we do normally go for org readies in that scenario but it does give you an option so that does indeed round off our extra deck uh, again there's some flex spots in there so it's entirely up to you if you want to change either of those for something different they are just what works for me at least on paper and then onto our side deck to round off today's video so we've got triple copies of droll and lockbird this is the most impactful of the remaining optional hand traps that we have. Uh, you could argue for stuff like Lancia. I just don't think it's as strong. Um, Lancia can end a turn. This can like win a game on the spot. That's the difference here. Um, I think that the oppression that this offers you over something like Lancia, where people can usually make some plays, is entirely different. Of course, both hit the bird matchup, which is a big thing, of course. But I think this is slightly better out of the two. Uh Poly, Super Poly that is of course, offers us a bit of a board breaking option. Of course we're a fusion deck so we've got plenty of targets for ourselves. A lot of the time set on normal summon Alistair and then Super Polying from there can actually get you into some really really good positions. Um, yeah just a really good option I think overall. Uh, again this is where those flex spots might come in. You might want to play some other Super Poly targets but this works well for me. Triple copies of Regeki. Um, yeah we just, you know what we were playing Lightning Storm before. Uh, there's not that many major back row decks and people tend to play around it if they do play monsters they tend to put stuff in defense as much as possible so they can't really do anything about regeki it just rips through absolutely everything it's a force negate it will force them to try and act to stop it otherwise they get the board wiped so that is a big thing i just really like it as an option over lightning storm at the moment of course in formats where back row is everywhere then possibly you want to switch up to that instead Speaking of back row removal, we do have some in here. Cosmic Cyclone. This is going to help us in a few matchups. Um, previously, of course, the Prank Kids matchup was a big one. Uh, hopefully, no longer a problem. Um, but yeah, it just gives you some really good options. It does hit the Brave Engine. Uh, it hits Bird a little bit because it forces them early, or you can get rid of the... Uh, is it the Trap card? The Trap card's what I'm thinking of. Uh, it can get rid of that. It can deal with just a lot of cards that offer recursion. Twin Twisters is a really good option, but we're playing the resource game heavily in this deck. And you want to continue to be, like, making really positive trades with your opponent. And I know that these are one-for-ones and two-for-twos, but the discard is can be not great in this deck with Twin Twisters. So Cosmic Cyclone is just a better option in my opinion. And then our final card here is the classic Floodgate. There can be only one. I did try at one point to try and fit Zombie World and all of those in here to deal with the bird matchup, but this just actually does the exact same job, if not better. It doesn't completely lock them out, but you get the point. Um, but the other thing as well is that it plays into other decks really well as well. And of course, we can't consistently get into that Zombie World engine. So uh, yeah, there can be anyone fills the void instead. But that is it for today's deck profile. Hopefully you guys have some ideas about how you'd like to play the deck going forward, about what works well and what doesn't. Heed my warnings, of course. Again, I think that the deck is in a really rough spot, and personally, I'm probably not going to be playing it going forward. I just haven't decided what comes next, because really, the format hasn't changed that much, and this deck does not play that well into it. So I imagine for a little while we're going to play some degenerate, maybe some rogue decks and stuff like that. Just have some fun at regionals and events that are coming up. We do have want to get ourselves into order for nationals, which is coming up next month so hopefully we'll have a decision by then and you'll start seeing some profiles come out from there apologies for those of you who have hung around and of course want to play invoked unfortunately it's not great news unless you're playing master duel of course in which case this is fucking great and not really all that much changes so if uh, if you are playing master duel then probably just look at my old profile and it's still pretty relevant but thanks again for coming in guys i really appreciate it by virtue of the fact that you made it this far into the video hopefully you've enjoyed it enough to hit subscribe or at least hate enough that you can possibly look away once again, a massive thank you for checking in. I do really appreciate it, and I will see you in the next one.